that you had in those kind of decisions. Well, I, I'll tell you, it wasn't so difficult because uh, uh, I am opposed to the draft. Yes, I, I, yes. and I still believe yes. that you're doing what is the most necessary thing we must have, and that is the organized reserve that must be present and build up on strength. But uh, I had opposed the registration when, when Selective Service itself earlier said that it would only the increased mobilization by a few days and seemed to me wasted. Yes, yes. Well, the latest manpower study revealed that it would say 42 days, and it seemed to me that was worthwhile. Let yeah. <laughs> me take those on. Oh, Mr. President, we do have a photo in front of the fire place. Oh, all right. Yes. Super, sir. We'll follow you. Over here. Well, you know, I, I got a little kinship with it. With, why don't we? Where do we? Uh, uh, how do you want us here? How do you want us here? Come on in tight. Yeah. Okay. All right. Little kinship here, you know, it's worse <laughs> cavalry, but uh, so we're keeping the fort open for you, sir. Uh, My unit, uh, I'll be there this weekend again. And uh, <laughs> so what's stationed there now? I have a uh, the largest reserve army support unit, it's the 103rd mm -hmm. Costco. In fact, this weekend, our counterparts from Germany, without getting into and we need that's continued good. support. And I think that's the key on the budget area. The reserve is still the, the most uh, economical force that we've got. Yes. I, that's, I think we think that's a mistake, our association. We're, we're having to, to eliminate uh, about 10 or 12 percent of the Coast Guard. We're being cut by 10 or 12 percent. We're, we're, we're still well, sorry, we said, I mean, the things, actually, it was, I think that it was aimed at, at uh, things not actually having to do with the functions out there that they, well, the whole coast guard is an armed service. Yeah, so we for mobilization, at least, you know, not only 100 percent, but maybe 200 percent of the coast guard required. But uh, the Navy war plans. We just appeal you for you to look at that, uh, right. sir, because I will. Uh, but I was assured that it was not actually getting into the the meat that uh, well, we went over to see Secretary Lewis yeah, recently, and uh, uh, yeah, we, that's the news isn't too good. Uh, we're concerned. Uh, we are really are. We think the perception, military perception. There you go. And there, are, there are lots of things in the Air Force as well as the other branches, but took in the Air Force. I mean, the reserve uh, carries out a very large percentage of the active duty of the total Air Force mission. We think that we can do a lot more of those things at a very cost-effective basis. About 30 to 40 percent of what it costs to have a full-time uh, on some of those responsibilities. You suppose I should confess to him that as a horse cavalryman, I flew a desk for four years in World War II for the Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> I guess now I could confess that a doctor helped me cheat to get my commission in the cabinet. What <laughs> <laughs> he did was <laughs> he let me he let me put my own hand over my <laughs> read without the glasses. And you know, if you push a pinhole in a piece of paper or something and look through it, if you're nearsighted, mm -hmm. it acts the same as a lens. You can see. Right. So what I was really doing was reading the card with this on <laughs> I got the commission, but when, when the war came, you couldn't get away with that. They stood there and put that black 
panel will be yeah. right. <laughs> and I remember when they finished the test up at Fort Mason, where I was first on duty, there were two medical officers there, and they finished testing my eyes, and one of them asked me how I got the commission, and I said, well, that's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one says, well, your limited service, I didn't know what that meant then, and then he explained it to me, but he said, your limited service, because he said, if we sent you overseas, you'd shoot general. <laughs> Forgive me, but the other doctor says, and you'd miss him. <laughs> Mr. President, let me give you a short message from NATO. You know, there's a reserve side of NATO, too. Confederation of Interallied Reserve Officers. Yes, well, the President's very glad to be here. Well, nice to see you, and congratulations. Thank you, sir. I'd like to introduce you to Jack Tancred. Jack Tancred. My, My pleasure, sir. You. Of the noble Mr. Liar. President, my pleasure. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Emilio Pryor. Nice to see you. Mr. President, want to go in front of the fireplace? All right. They'd like a uh, group picture. Right there. All right. All right. For perfect identification, do you mind where we are? Not at all. It's, uh, I'm the only one without one. I forgot to say. So we thought about the coach. <laughs> no, I have one. Uh, no, he's upstairs. No, we don't. We don't care. We sure. don't care. We need another one. Well. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, listen, thank you all. Can we get one just for the present? You can give us some. Well, things like wow. AWAX. And, and, uh, and I'd like it if you'd. Uh, Continue to give us that support on that defense program. We're going to have to have that. But I'll tell you, you'll find it in your phone. I know that. Right here, the President, is a copy of all of our resolutions that require legislation, which we have a lot of defense issues in there, as well as uh, concern for veterans. Well, thank and you. And in addition, we have a, a letter here asking you to, uh, wishing you take part in our Boy State program. And they meet here in July. The Boy State program concerns the junior high school student who was given the opportunity to study the government at the local level or at the state. And uh, with this, we bring two out of each state here to the national to get national issues. And they've been passed, they've been able to meet out in the garden, and we hope that you can find your schedule. You well, might be able to. I hope I can too. To I know they're, they're planning a lot of trips advanced. and things down the road for me, and I don't know just when they're going to take place, but. Isn't this the same thing I used to as governor? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, That's right. I mean, California. Then, uh, yes. Another letter we have is extending the invitation to come to our national convention in Chicago on August the 26th. It will be flexible any day there that might fit your right. schedule. And I want to tell you that back in 66, 67, when I was state commander of Texas, I went through my Republican committee trying to get you to be my speaker for the Republican convention. And they said you couldn't leave California. So I hope you it. <laughs> but we do have that invitation to your letter uh, to you, Mr. President. Yeah, right. And then there's one other subject I'm bringing up. Last year, a couple of times this year, you talked about voluntarism. Well, this is what we're all about. We have been for 63 years. I know. And as you know here, we've got the figures here. That it's 40 million people that three out of 10 don't make their time which that gives you a figure of about three and a half million people working full time for one year. Mm -hmm. We have three and a half million people within our organization, our auxiliary, that work a good percentage of that time. Good Lord, that's just about the total of 2.6 <laughs> million members. Yeah. Yeah. But last year we gave over two and a quarter million hours to the Veterans Administration Hospital, over 281,000 pints of blood, over five million hours to the community service. and so. We have worked in many fields, and we've contributed over $500 million to our children's programs, such as Boys State, yeah. North Oracle, and what have you. But there's one thing that you could help us on, is the fact that being a volunteer service, we depend a great deal on our programs, such as Bingo, and, and the IRS taxing their unrelated income, and works a hardship on our volunteer programs. It takes money away from us that carry on these volunteer programs. And then the, uh, program of the volunteer workers where they can deduct nine cents on a service. We would like to see that increase to 20 cents a mile, where we mm. cross more interest within the volunteer work. And of course, there's a copyright bill on the music in our halls. That, that's taxation. It hurts our organization. It takes away from the funds we have for our community service. 
And any help you could give us in that would, would be good. No, no, he's been no he's, 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 uh, he happens to be my <laughs> choice, but I know there are other views by uh, so you ought to hear all the arguments first. smirking editor. Yeah, sure. When he was on, they didn't cut away. Right. And they just left him have at it there. Jeez, he was a, if he were in Hollywood, I can tell you automatically he would play villains. <laughs> <laughs> you get one look at his face and you don't like it. <laughs> but how is it these guys from Des Moines so, so uh, mean? Oh, yeah. They've got the Des Moines register and that work for all the Yes. I know, but uh, if I didn't interrupt anyone, I would I mean, if you know a few things, I know that Dave has briefed you and uh, considerably so practically anything I say will probably be repeating, then I'll justify it on the grounds that it bears repeating. <laughs> I know that I've been reading a lot and enjoying it less <laughs> about deep budget cuts and, uh, and the social programs and how we we're overspending on defense kind of inhumane and so forth. And uh, I don't know whether Dave has told you this or not, but uh, actually the social reform cuts don't sound so deep when you recognize that not counting Social Security, for a number of years they've been increasing at a rate of 15% a year in cost. And uh, they're still increasing in the 83 way by 6%, not 15%. And we think that's a goal to be aimed at. And that we're actually spending almost as much on the elderly alone uh, as we are on national defense. But the in fact, what we're spending next year in the elderly will be twice as much as it was five years ago. And I know you know, on the State of the Union address, I spoke of 95 million meals that we're subsidizing, that's one out of seven, 19 million people are still left on food stamps. But what I'm leading to with just these figures, not to burden you with a lot of statistics, is that much of what we're trying to do is not to take away from those that truly are in need, but to recognize that the goal from the very beginning with regard to those programs and let's say, sum them up in the subject, welfare, should always have been to see how many people each year, how much we could increase the number of people who were made independent of those services and self-sufficient. But what we've created is a permanent structure and a bureaucracy for whom the poor have become a clientele. And so in good times and bad, we find this great increase in, in need. And uh, we think that what we're trying to do is some of the programs, uh, and some of the changes we're making are not just aimed at cutting down the numbers of people, but aimed at this more constructive goal in defense, Get back to that for just a minute. Manpower, maintenance, readiness is the biggest part of the budget. If we eliminated all of the big weapon systems, uh, we would only reduce the 1983 budget by six and a half billion dollars. 
and that yet and yet doing that would be unilateral disarmament, which I think would send the worst message we could possibly send all over the world. The Defense spending is 6.3% of the gross national product in the decade of the 50s, it was 9%. And the last thing I'll say is that the, we believe that the answer to the deficit problem, uh, the answer to the things that have been going on, is restoration of the economy. Uh, we know there's a limit below which you can't go in cutting government spending in order to erase that deficit. We know that raising taxes won't do it because we've been raising taxes for years. And uh, consistent with that have been the continued deficits. Only had one balanced budget in 20 years. But we do believe that the way to end that is to increase government revenues by increasing the economic base and the number of people who are taxpayers and not subsisting on that on tax funds, and we think that our tax program is geared to doing that. I just had <coughs> one figure here that I wanted to, I'd like to find one that I know Dave hasn't used yet. Uh, here. Find one he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just give you an example of this, of what we're talking about in these social reforms. Uh, been a great storm, we cut CETA and job training program. 1980s budget was $3.2 billion. And we're not going to call it CETA, but our job training program in the say 83 budget is one point. Is that the Holland approach to putting freeze on the budget spending? Well, I'm a little surprised at his proposal, and they must put some of his colleagues in his own party uh, pretty much on the spot. Because a freeze, it sounds very simple, but a freeze would result in even further cuts than we're making in the social uh, reform programs. Uh, I feel very definitely, on where I would disagree again, is I feel very definitely that to send a signal with regard to defense spending, <coughs> that a cut in that would send would be the worst thing we could do in the international scene. I have to disagree with the freeze on that, and then, of course, he would, that freeze would also apply to the tax reforms, which we think are going to offer the best opportunity of stimulating the economy. Do you see any possible, we'll, we'll grudgingly give in. But that's it, that's all. Yes, I, even the, the talk about other taxation that would not interfere with the you know, increase taxes over here that doesn't interfere with the same tax rate. And if you give them a tax cut here, at the same time you give them a tax increase,